Hey guys, I, was, I know it's been a very long time since my last film review or anything else for that matter. Um, I've been busy as hell with uh, commissions as well as uh, films and everything's kind of been hectic as hell for the last uh, few weeks. Um, so I just wanted to throw out a review the, of a movie I, I was able to watch a little while ago. It was the 2011 film Sleeping Beauty by Julia Lay. And I had seen trailers for this film long before, uh, long, long before I had actually been able to watch it. I was able to catch it on Netflix. And uh, it intrigued me because um, <clears throat> I had just seen Emily Browning in Sucker Punch, uh, which I wasn't a fan of, but I was a fan of Emily Browning. Emily Browning was one of the uh, more interesting actors in the film, and I was interested to see how she was going to pull off an erotic drama because, you know, that's what it what Sleeping Beauty is, but also at the same time, because it was an official selection at the Cannes Film Festival, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to watch it. Uh, and from what I remember, it was the uh, first competition entry to be screened. Uh, it's an Australian film, which I believe uh, Emily Browning is Australian, so let's get into it. Um, the... Film centers around Emily Browning's character Lucy. Uh, she's just a, a university student with a bunch of odd jobs, and um, this movie I'm very torn on. Um, I'm not sure exactly if I like it or I don't. It's it's a it's a weird kind of uh, middle ground for me because there are parts of it that I really think are really interesting, but at the same time, the overall concept of the film. Uh, now let me rephrase, the overall structuring of the film I find very strange. The editing was done by, I believe, his name was Nick Myers. Um, and I don't know any of his other work. I haven't looked into it. Uh, but uh, the editing in this film is very strange. Uh, but that also kind of ties in together with the structuring of the screenplay. And... When it comes down to screenplays, it's it's a big thing for me. When it uh, it always is usually about the story. If the screenplay isn't good, then you know I won't find I, a lot. Of, the rest of the movie kind of falls to pieces. That's how it was with Sucker Punch for me. Um, but it's told less. It doesn't really have a plot, which I'm fine with. I mean, I don't have a problem with that. If you've seen any of my films, very little plots in any of my later work. Uh, it's more about the study of this character, Lucy, uh, going about it, it. I think it's... it's. I can see how it could all, it kind of be uh, a commentary on apathy. Uh, kind of how she's sleeping through her daily life, just kind of doing you know, things in order to get by, regardless of what it happens to be. I know she, uh, she works as a, a waitress in a coffee shop. Um, she, uh, she, she does, like, experimental testing. The first thing you see in the movie is her, uh, getting paid, to, uh, to do this experimental testing where she swallows this, uh, this esophageal, I think, balloon, because it, like, puts, like, pressure on her chest and whatnot. And, uh, and then also, uh, she, I believe, I could be wrong on this one, I believe that she also worked at, works as an escort, uh, because you see her, like, snort cocaine in a, a club, and then she goes over with the same, with the same girl she snorted, uh, cocaine with over to the table where they're basically, you know, she, she's working out a deal, uh, when she's gonna fuck one of the client, one of the people sitting at the table, um, and the way that Emily plays the character is very interesting to me. It's, uh, she's very, as I said, she's very apathetic to her environment. She just kind of just struggles. She doesn't even struggle. She just kind of drifts from one scene to the next. Um, and she, uh, what prompts the movie, I, th I believe, what prompts the movie to go forward is that one, that her roommate, uh, she, uh, 
she, she, the person who lives with her, uh, one of the people who live with her, uh, he does not like her. I mean, he, he, he bitches about her, like, in every scene he's in. And, uh, she's trying to find money in order to pay for rent. But at the same time, you can see all the jobs she's working and that she does, I mean, she works as a waitress, she works as, uh, a, uh, she works as an office attendant. Uh, she also works at, with the uh, the experimentation, uh, and I'm I'm not sure you know whether or not she actually works as an escort. I mean, I think she just randomly fucks people because actually there's a later scene where she just asks someone to suck his dick. So you know it might just be the fact that she's a little bit of a uh, just someone who just doesn't care and. I found that a very interesting concept, and I, I liked it a lot. Uh, when it got finally got into a point where she's trying to find money, she she t has an ad that she answers, where she uh, sets up to be a waitress in lingerie, and uh, it's that's when the movie starts getting weird, and that's fine with me. I mean, it's very eyes wide shut. Actually, the scene where She's serving these uh, guests, these people having a dinner. She and the other waitresses are all in lingerie. She's in the least revealing lingerie. Everyone else is kind of like, everything's just cut out around the breasts and all that. And uh, they're wearing very harsh makeup. She's not. Um, I guess that is to extenuate the fact, because everyone constantly keeps telling her that she's a beautiful girl. And uh, she is. I mean, Emily Browning is very beautiful. But at the same time, it's it's very, very much about, uh, very, very, it comes across to me, at least in the very beginning of it, uh, that uh, I thought that it was going to go into Eyes Wide Shut or, uh, you know, the Ninth Gate territory, like these weird orgies and these secret societies and that type of stuff. And, and really, in reality, it's not. Uh, it's something else that's very different. Uh, she <laughs> she uh, kind of becomes literally what they call a sleeping beauty, uh, where she drinks like this tea that makes her fall asleep uh, when she stops being like the lingerie waitress. She uh, she drinks this tea that makes her fall asleep, and then after that. Uh, these clients are brought into the room because uh, this happens several times throughout the film. The clients are brought into the room, and the thing the, the thing that they say is the only rule is that they can't penetrate her. Uh, and all of the clients that end up going into the room are these old men of apparently of uh, uh, of value and uh, of wealth and uh, of varying different uh, personality types and I find it very interesting that they keep you know it's a very a wide array of uh, personalities and the camera angles during pretty much the majority of this is pretty much all done with very long takes some scenes are only played from one camera angle and several filmmakers uh, like Michael Haneke uh, are pioneers of these types of filmmaking styles, and I, I, I think that it, it really does make a big difference. But at the same time, because of the cinematography and because of this, this it's very it's never really up close. Uh, I, it doesn't mean like it needs to be like you know a giallo film where everything's really tight knit, everything's like kind of like all over the place and really overblown. But at the same time, it, it never can, I never found a connection with these characters in any way, um, and especially when uh, Emily Browning's character Lucy uh, she kind of like there is these really tragic moments that are happening. Uh, there's this one scene, and I, I, I'm afraid, to, if you don't want to, uh, spoilers, to stop watching this, there's a scene where a friend of hers, his name's Birdman, and, or at least that's all he's ever called, and uh, he, uh, he overdoses uh, on purpose, and he calls her over, and he's just sitting there dying, 
and she's just holding him, or he's holding her, I can't remember exactly, but she's just crying during it. And, I mean, it's it's just really tragic, actually. Uh, it's really, really tragic. But at the same time, even though the scenario itself is is very depressing at the same time, I was not invested. I, I just, I was kind of sitting there, and I'm like, there's no connection that I have. And then again, there could be... There's plenty of characters. There's plenty of movies that have tons of characters in there that you don't have connection to, but they're still good at the same time. I just... I couldn't find anything... I couldn't empathize, obviously, for various reasons, but at the same time, it just... Something didn't sit well with me. And maybe I guess that was the whole point of the film, that, you know, you're not supposed... It's not supposed to sit well. You're not supposed to accept it. You're not supposed to be apathetic toward the situation. It's kind of like how, even though her job... She gets paid a lot of money to, you know, be this sleeping beauty where... Uh, it's not sex, but, you know, it's, it's anything else, I guess. There's this one scene where a guy is just like, you know just, like, saying stuff to her when she's asleep, like, you know, he's gonna fuck her and whatnot, and all he does, actually, is, uh, he sticks his fingers in her mouth, and also, he burns behind her ear with a cigarette, and, but other times, like, there's this one person who, the only thing he does is he just sleeps in the bed with her, and there's another guy who all he does is that he picks her up and car and tries to carry her around, but he ends up hurting himself. And I, I kind of think that uh, all of the men that are the clients here, one, uh, they're all high-class people, apparently, but at the same time, they're all impotent. Uh, I think uh, they're, they, they can't have sex, even though, you know, they have these large, uh, these lo this large wealth and also these you know, the status that comes with this, but they just, they're impotent in not only a sexual way, but also in their lives. They're, they feel like, you know, their lives are, are hollow and, and, and almost pointless at this point in which there is an actual, uh, one of the, I guess you can say more, uh, civilized clients. Uh, at the very end of the film, he ends up overdosing on purpose on this 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 tea that makes her fall asleep and he ends up dying in the bed with her and it's it, it's it's a very fractured uh, narrative and actually some scenes are her just walking uh, and I think it's it, it perpetuates this idea of just drifting through your life, you know, not caring, not trying to connect with people, and if you do try to connect with people, it's, it's very one-sided, uh, like with the character Birdman, he, he, you can tell that he's very much, that he cares for her, but at the same time, she does not return that type of, that, that care, um, there's this one part where she asks him to marry, uh, her, and he says yes, but you can tell between the two of them, it's really kind of just a joke. And even though, you know, afterward they kind of just sit together, she just, like, he's just narrating uh, the, the show that they're watching on television, and she's just crying. So, I don't know, maybe it's a possibility that I didn't necessarily get it, but at the same time... I feel that I, I got some of the underlying themes of the film, or at least I, I believe so. But at the same time, it, it didn't make it any... Uh, it didn't make it any uh, of a better movie for me. So at the, what I'm saying, again, like, it's, it's very much... I'm very much in the middle of the road here because the movie is very well made. It's very interesting the way it's made. The way it's structured is very interesting. But at the same time, the screenplay and the editing is very bizarre to me to a point in which that it, it, it's just off-putting. And there are plenty of erotic films that I do enjoy, that I do that, that are some of my favorite films. Eyes Wide Shut, uh, Kubrick's Eyes Wide Shut, is one of my all-time favorite films. And it, that has a very slow, very kind of droning pace at some times, but at the same time, it the characters are interesting. The characters are, if not connect if not uh, 
relatable. They're they are very vivid, and I couldn't say that about all the the majority of the characters in this. I think the the one bit that actually makes Emily Browning uh, Emily Browning's performance interesting in this film is at the very end of the film when they finally wake her up, uh, and. Uh, she begins screaming at the end when she just when she finds the guy dead in the bed next to her, uh, and to be honest, I mean, I I guess I could like throw jabs at what it like you know just because like you know maybe just because he's dead or whatnot, but I think it goes deeper than that, and I think I guess uh, the movie will require multiple viewings because you know the first time I watched Eyes Wide Shut, I was you know kind of I was just weirded by it, and I, I didn't begin to really begin the concept, so maybe I require multiple viewings for this film more than I've already watched it, but at the same time, I, I mean, will I recommend this film? Uh, yeah, I would recommend this film, but I would recommend the film just be, because I think it's a good movie. I think it's an interesting experience to watch it, and I think that you'll either come out on the other side of this film when it ends, either thinking that it was possibly uh, a very deep movie, if not moving, but deep, like very, very thought provoking. And I definitely believe it's thought provoking, but at the same time, it, I don't know, it just something just doesn't mesh with me. And I really hate to think, uh, that, you know, it, it I just can't seem to put my finger on exactly why that I'm off-put by it. As I said, the screenplay and the editing are kind of uh, off-putting to me, but for reasons that I don't necessarily know. And I, I really uh, I either hope uh, to either solidify for uh, concrete reasons why that I don't sit well with this film, or else I come around to a a point in which that I, I understand and I can uh, accept uh, what the film is, but I don't know. At this point, I, I just can't really say too much about it. Uh, so I recommend the film definitely for people who want to have a thought-provoking experience. Uh, will it be a film that I think a lot of people will like? No. What I do some people like it? Yeah, if you see some reviews like on Rotten Tomatoes or Netflix or IMDb or you know Metacritic or anything like that, uh, there are plenty of people who actually give this movie unreal acclaim. And I, I you know, when I read their 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 reasons for it, and a lot of it does make sense to me. Like a lot of the the the, the subtext in the film is there; it's very apparent. Uh, but at the same time. I read the reviews and people's opinions, and not just critics, but normal people, like, you know, regular people's opinions on the film, and it, I don't know, it just doesn't mesh, uh, but definitely give it a watch. I mean, it's on Netflix, it's on the instant Netflix, too, so it's, you can watch it from your laptop or computer or your television, Xbox, whatever you have. Uh, definitely give it a watch. I think you definitely need to give the movie a chance, if nothing else. Um, on a side note, away from it, I know I'm using this to, to plug my own projects here, uh, within the next week, I'll be coming out with, uh, a short film, uh, that's based in part off of several routines from William S. Burroughs' book, Naked Lunch, and also Junkie, uh, right now it's titled The Black Meat, but at the, at this point I'm thinking about retitling the film, uh, I'm also going to be coming out with a music video for the Baltimore bass band, A Life Review. Uh, keep an eye open for that when it rears its head. And uh, more information will be coming out about Nightscapes when it does. Uh, hopefully we'll have a poster design come out pretty soon. Uh, filmmaking has been pretty much stagnant for the last couple of weeks due to various other uh, problems and other circumstances surrounding it. And... Uh, also, the uh, the 2012 Volley Awards are this Friday, and uh, Angels Carrying Savage Weapons and uh, Follies of Youth have been nominated in separate categories for 
Volley Awards this year. Uh, I believe uh, the Black Meat, if uh, I finish it within the time uh, the time limits, I'll be able to submit it to the uh, the 2012 Lightstruck Film Festival. Uh, I'll keep you guys updated on that later this week. I'll I'm going to try to get up my na my next uh, Cinema Historia review within the next week, as well as another Hidden Gems review, another uh, Greatest Directors review, and uh, hopefully I can also try to get another film review in. I want to go try to see uh, The Cabin in the Woods later on, and also try to see The Avengers. Um, so if I'm able to do that within the next week, you'll be the first to know, obviously, so... Thanks again for your time, guys, and I'll see you soon.